Okay, so I decided we're gonna do a part two of this. So here's part two, and it hopefully won't be as long. But I wanted to show you guys something else. So here is the A4C uh, Skyhawk. Okay, for those of you who don't recognize it, or maybe do recognize it, this is the same aircraft that Jester and Viper flew in Top Gun. Um, and this aircraft is a full fidelity um, cockpit. So all the button switches, etc., work and do something. So boop, you can turn that, tick that, blah, blah, blah. Okay, everything in it. Um, well, just about everything in it. Um, boop. Okay. Um, everything in it works. Now, the thing I wanted to point out about this aircraft is it's made by community members. A, a team of very talented guys who, and gals, I guess, who are um, just awesome. And which means that this aircraft is 100% completely free. Okay, and I will have a link for it in the description below. So that way, if you're interested, you guys can download. It's a blast to fly. The air-to-air -air refueling works. It's air-to-ground works. It's air-to-air -air works. You name it. It's fun. Now, it's an older jet, right? It's from, what, back in Korea, I think. Um, but it's a ton of fun to fly. And again, another option, if you're interested in getting into the full fidelity cockpit, you can try this one out, and it's 100% free. You don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to burn $60 that you may not have, okay? Um, now... Let's talk about one more thing that um, has what got us on this was the um, ATC. Uh, the one thing this aircraft does not have at the moment was the ability to talk to ATC. Um, so let's find the Harrier. You can talk to ground control, by the way, with it. It just can't talk to ATC. So here we are in the Harrier. And all I'm going to hit is the backslash is above the enter key. So the right slash or left slash, I guess it would be. And you can see here's ATC. The closest airfield to you will always be up top. It sort of works its way down. Okay. Huh, what about the early, early bricks out there? Oh, for the helicopters. Never mind. Um, so in this case, now you can see everything's grayed out. It's because the power is off on the aircraft. Some servers, if you're in multiplayer, will require you to actually dial in the frequency. But if you're ever wondering, here's your frequencies. Okay, they're actually listed right up here. Nothing you can do is hit F10. Oops, hit the bottom button. I'm click that. that. You can hit F10. Okay, zoom out and click on any airfield name right here and you get all this information right here. You get your elevation of the uh, airfield, the runway length, its coordinates um, in degrees, minutes, decimal minutes. You get your tack hand for it. Here's your ATC frequencies. So we would either use the 260 or 131. Okay, um, your runways 31 and 13. Um, for those of you who don't know, runways get their designation by what direction you're flying as you are approaching or taking off from them. Um, so, for example, like going this way would be 3-1. Is that right? You can zoom in. Oh, here, let's do this. Satellite! There you go. Ah, nailed it. 3-1. Okay, so flying that way, you're on runway 3-1. Coming the other way, you're on, you're on runway 1-3. Gosh, I can't talk right now. Here's your ILS. So you get a bunch of information about the aerodome um, just by clicking on the name. So that's one way that you can get your frequencies. But so some servers, some missions will require you to actually dial in the frequencies on the radio, which means the aircraft must be powered on. But a lot of them have this simple radio option, which you can go F5 for ATC. We're just going to click on Batumi and request the startup. May not give it back to us because I think I have the... Um, I think it's required on my server to um, have the aircraft powered on and use your comms. But, so here's what could happen. Okay, you power up, ATC is going to come back and tell you, hey, yeah, startup approved, blah, blah, blah. When it, um, when you go to ATC again, now I'm going to be very blunt and say that very rarely do you have to use ATC. Is it a requirement, okay? If you're doing a single-player mission, walk through it, just because if you have AI aircraft with you, they'll sort of follow you with the ATC commands. But, for example, after this, after we start up, there will be, we'll hit this button again, we'll go to ATC, we'll hit Batumi again, and this time it will say, um, request taxi. You'll hit request taxi. And it'll tell you, you know, a bunch of information, but it'll, basically all it says is, yes, you're clear of taxi, here's the runway to use. It's not going to give you taxiway instructions. It's not going to tell you, you know, taxi runway 13 via alpha, hold short, bravo. It's not going to do any of that, okay? It's just going to say, go to runway 31 and taxi is basically what it says. For the moment, it's, it's supposed to get more advanced. I know uh, Eagle Dynamics is working on it, but for right now, that's all it is, okay? But it's not a requirement to use it. Okay, it's really not, especially if you're just up practicing around. Um, so 
don't necessarily get too stressed out over ATC. Um, it's the same thing when you approach the runway. As soon as you know, you'll, what you do is hold short, so you get right to the runway, but you won't actually go on it. You bring up your radio menu again. There'll be one that says request takeoff, and you'll see the call up, and then you'll see the response. Either it'll deny you if another aircraft's coming in, or that there's an aircraft on the runway, or it'll tell you cleared for takeoff. Okay, and same thing on the approach. Um, it's very simple, very basic ATC. So don't get frustrated by it. The big one to remember is, I think that I want to talk to you guys about is the ground crew. Rearm, refuel, electric power, change, um, or request repair. People get confused about some of these. So real quick, to rearm and refuel many of the aircraft, not all, and this is something that sort of you're just going to have to go through trial and error, but many of the aircraft require uh, at least the canopy to be open or the engine to be shut down. Um, but uh, at the same token, many don't. For example, the F-18, you can rearm and refuel it with the engine running um, and your canopy down. Um, I think, actually, sorry, what I'm thinking of is request repair. Request repair, um, almost all the aircraft that I can think of, I think all the aircraft, require the engine to be completely shut down and the canopy has to be open. Basically, you, what you're doing is simulating that you, you had to shut the plane down and you had to get out of it while they fixed it, right? Um... And then ground electric power, a lot of the aircraft require air start or electric power to start. Okay, it doesn't have enough juice on its own. Um, so that's something that you can request. Again, this is something that's going to be shown in those manuals that I gave you guys links to. Um, but those are the big ones. Rearm and refuel, sorry, most of the aircraft, I would say, you do not have to power down. You do not have to open the canopy. If you find that you are unable to, though, like it's just like, what the heck, every time I hit it, it, it won't do anything. And they'll tell you. Um, can't do it or deny it or something like that. I can't remember. Unable to comply. That's what it says. Um, and that, if that's the situation, it keeps coming back to that. Shut your aircraft down. Um, open your canopy and then try it again. And I'll bet you it'll work. Okay. Um, but don't get too stressed out over ATC. It's really not worth the hassle. Focus on everything else first. Okay. Focus on getting comfortable with the aircraft. Focus on setting up your controls. Um, I'll give you guys a link in the description below also to a tutorial I give on how to set up your controls, how to set up your axis, how to create dead zones, how to smooth out the controls to make your controller a little bit more comfortable for you, whether you want less input, more input, um, things like that. Maybe you're struggling with, um, you know, every time I just lay my hand down on my controller, the aircraft's moving all over the place, okay? The tutorial I have in the description below will show you guys how to solve a lot of that, okay? Um, but... Uh, Use my channel. Use these two videos as a as a reference for you guys, please. Um, you know, if you have questions or comments, please leave them leave them below. You know, if you have questions and I get enough questions, if there's something very specific that you're struggling with, either I'll respond in in the comment field. You know, it may not be right away. Sometimes it takes me a day or two, but I will get to you. I promise. I I read all the comments. Um, but um, still use the forums. I know a lot of people resort to RTFM, read the you-know-what manual. Um, and I get it. That's a crappy response. I absolutely agree. Um, but at the same token, the information is there. Um, one more thing on things like that. Don't go to the forums and necessarily try to search from here. Okay, you'll find that Google is actually the way to go. So let's, you know, like let's say we were looking for one of these. You know, I would just come here. And do DCS, there you go, F15B tutorial. And you have right here Heat Blues tutorial videos, um, 1.0 documentation. Chuck's guides are posted on both mudspike.com and. I thought he had, I thought there was a link for it right here, but either way, um, let's see what this one is. So here's a bunch of different uh, tutorial videos and things like that with it. Um, Oh, hey, there's mine. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, so here's some guides there. Here, like I said, oh, no, that's not the one I wanted. Back up. Here's Chuck's tutorial guide. So if you click on that, it's Mud Spikes website. So it's not on the forums. It's a different location than what I'm showing you below. But still, you know, it's the same same document. Um, so you guys have that available to you. Google things. Just make sure you emphasize DCS in your Google searches. Uh, the Google master is the king. He knows all. The internet never lies. Okay. Um, and uh, I know I'm rambling at this point, guys, and I'm sorry. I, I really want to help people. I really want, you know, that's what my channel is all about is, is stemming the learning curve. You know, my learning curve was tough. You know, I, I certainly did not know as much as I think I did. I certainly did not have the resources and, and information available to me right at the start. Um, so if you guys, you know, 
on this forum post, you know, um, on my YouTube channel, under these videos. Leave your questions. Leave your comments. It, you know, be specific with your questions. Please tr don't go on the on a rant in these. Okay, if if I missed information, if you thought this was stupid, sorry. Um, but try to leave the comment fields for people who are looking for questions, who who want uh, me to emphasize a tutorial. Um, you know, to familiarize yourself with DCS. Try to keep it away from aircraft specific questions. There are plenty of tutorials and guides for specifically for that aircraft. Um, you can leave them, but I, I, I may just point you to another guide, you know, as long as you're okay with that, that's fine. Um, but, um, you know, if there's specific things with Inside DCS World that I haven't covered today, um, specific things outside of the aircraft itself that you need help with or that you're, you need some opinions on, leave them in the forums below, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my ability. I hope you guys um, enjoy DCS. I hope this hasn't steered you away from it. Um, and uh, welcome to the community, guys. I will see you guys all in the next one. Be sure to uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Hit that like and subscribe button for me and take care.